Okay, so I've had a few people request that I do a tutorial about how I uh, process my photos, and I decided that since I had free time, um, why not? So, uh, to not waste any of our time, I'm going to dive right in. Okay, so first of all, um, I've already edited all of my, what I'd consider my A photos, and now I'd go on to my B photos, and this is one of those. Actually, this would probably be a C photo because it made it past the A and the B uh, editing or Cole session. And uh, so usually what I do first is go in at 200% and look at the sharpness. And I always apply some sharpness, um, generally more than others. My lens that I'm using right now is sort of broken. Uh, the front element moves around a bit and it makes focusing taxing and that's no excuse however it's what I have right now and I have to work with it and what I'm doing right now is going through and adjusting the amount of sharpening the uh, radius for the sharpening and the detail for the sharpening and finally the masking for those previous three selections and if you're not sure which each of these do then uh, the easiest way for you to understand is go through and play with them and watch how they affect the image and uh, I wish I could give you a a more detailed explanation however they seem to be pretty self-explanatory to me um, the amount affects just that it affects how much sharpening gets put to the photo um, whereas radius affects the I think the extent of um, the pixels or how far out it goes or how far out it searches around the particular area of contrast in order to um, boost those local contrast and you know, that it happens or boost local contrast because um, that's essentially all sharpening does. It uh, increases contrast along edges. So if I turn it off, you'll notice that that contrast is decreased and turn it on, it increases. So it doesn't actually bring any more new detail on the photo. It just enhances that detail in a manner of speaking. And then I add a little bit of um, noise reduction and you can see the, out or the before and the after. So it's a sizable improvement. I'm going to zoom out and then I go up to my or my tone curve and um, it's really popular to bring the blacks up some and so I, I do that for all of my photos. Um, a lot of people like to bring them up something like that and then you get this really matted look or whatever. That's that's not me. Um, that, might work, that style might work for some people but it's not how I have my own creative vision so I stay away from that. So I bring it to about there, um, sometimes lower, and then bring my mids down, or my shadows down, um, my highlights up some, just to give it some contrast, and it makes the photo a bit brighter, a bit punchier, and that's what I'm going for. And then sometimes I'll bring my mids up, depending on the feel exactly for the photo. However, I'm going to keep them how they were, like that. And um, if you're not aware of this, if you're making... Uh, an adjustment on the tone curve, you can just drag it off to delete that adjustment. And they usually do about um, negative five as far as my saturation is concerned. And most of the time, I don't mess with the exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, blacks, etc., um, or the temperature. I try to get all of that stuff generally in camera. Uh, the contrast slider, I don't mess with at all. Anything that I can do with the contrast slider, I do with the tone curve. Highlights, um, some people like to recover their highlights. I feel like it it sort of degrades the, I don't know, the feel of the photo. It, you get rid of the atmosphere of the photo. And I just, I don't know, these are sliders that I played with whenever I was starting out in um, my photographic journey. However, it's not anything that I mess with now. It's, it's objective preference. I just don't prefer to use them. And then I go, and I guess it's a habit, I go and desaturate my greens some, however there aren't any greens in this photo, um, but I, I do it anyways, I don't know. Uh, completely useless, I know, but it, it makes me feel happy about it. And then I bring my yellows down um, to something that I like, so something like that, there we go, and then maybe those reds just a bit where that or perhaps those are oranges. Maybe it's in the oranges. Yeah, there we go. Mm, no, I'm not quite feeling it. There's a little lens flare going on. 
right there. And uh, I don't like to tone it down some, but um, I don't like how it affects the image globally and I don't feel like masking it out because it's kind of unique, that lens flare. So I'll just keep it. Um, and then after I do my, my few color adjustments, I go through and adjust the tones again. Maybe a little bit more in the highlights. A little bit closer to the mid-tones. And I try not to get it too punchy because the next step that I do in um, Photoshop is going to add a little bit more of that punch. And so if I do it too much in the raw conversion, it uh, doesn't work as well as what I do in Photoshop. And so I'm going to open that as a smart object, not because I need to. Um, I could have just opened it, it opened it as a um, a TIFF in Photoshop, but there's always the possibility that I might want to use the uh, the extra benefits that the small objects can lend us. So I'm going to duplicate that and then rasterize that layer um, just out of habit, really, um, in case I want to actually go and make some adjustments on the image itself. I might. Um, she has good skin, um, but I might go through and even some of the blotchiness just a bit, not overdo it, but just make it a little bit more even. So generally I go through and I add a black and white adjustment layer and then set that to soft light. And um, you can adjust the opacity of that layer by hitting um, 1 through 0, 1 being 10% opacity, 0 being 100% opacity. And I'm going to dial it in somewhere around 50%. And let's see how I like that. And that looks... A little bit too much, maybe 40, 40, 30, 40, 35, and I'm happy with that. And then um, I'm going to go through and add a selective color adjustment. And this one is really subjective. Uh, sometimes I'll go in with an idea of how I want the photo to look. Other times I'll just play with it. This one, however, I do want some blues in the mid-tones and uh, sort of get a cooler, not quite too purple look. I don't, I hate that when people go full out, you know, Barney on their photos, but um, just want to bring in some cooler blues, perhaps. Um, maybe some cyan to help bring that in. And bring that down some, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these into a group and I can um, select both of those layers by selecting that first one. You gotta press shift if it's a consecutive line, um, or you can just go through and select each one that you want to if you um, click, pl click plus command, or I believe it's control if you're on PC, but I'm on a Mac. And so I want to put all those into a group, and I select them all and press command G, and it groups them right there. And so you can see all the changes that I've made so far. And I think maybe I like a little bit less blue in the shadows, it's a little bit better, yeah, and um, I don't really want to mess with the magentas, I don't like how strong it is, I feel like the same effect, or similar effect, could be had um, putting blues in the shadow, or the neutrals rather, or the neutral midtones, uh, and it's really just a game of preference, uh, what I like you may not like, but that's okay because I shoot for myself and my clients pick me because of that. And this one doesn't really have too many um, blacks, but I go through and see if I can add a little bit more contrast with them. Um, I'll go through and take that out. I kind of like how it looks right now. Uh, generally, unless the photo has just a ton of blacks, I don't mess with it too much. The same with whites. Um, I stray away from messing with the whites because t things tend to start to look unnatural when you mess with the light, with the whites. Um, I mean, this might be your thing, but I played with it whenever I was starting out, and it's just not, it looks too, um, I like to go for a little bit more of a natural look, and I feel like when you play with the whites too much, you get rid of the natural look. So, I do that, and then lastly, or not lastly, but one of the um, final things I do, um, I will go through and make a selection roughly in the direction of the light and uh, I'm gonna make that selection right there and refine the edge and feather that out quite a bit and then shift the edge back just a bit I don't want her face to be um, completely 
uh, within or out of the mask but I do want it to be somewhat in that little gradient there it's looking good to me and then I'm going to bring up the um, shadows and darks again and then uh, pull up on the highlights or the midtones and it creates this um, look of sun coming through and uh, aesthetically I like that look other people may not and I will go through and adjust it somewhat to better refine exactly what's going on uh, to more fine tune it and just cropped out some of that adjustment And I think I'm going to do a similar adjustment down here. I want the whole photo to be rather bright and airy. And generally after those adjustments are done, I'll go through and adjust my black and white soft light layer again, um, just to dial in and see uh, what I like. And now we were at 35 and now we're at 70, and it looks fine to me. Um, I'm enjoying where it's looking, however I do want to bring um, or lessen the contrast in that area. So I might um, go to that adjustment layer and... Um, one moment, my brush is disappearing. Let me see if I can't bring that back by switching windows. No. Oh, what was it? To hide and show the brush. I don't remember. I, I does this all the time, and I forget what it is exactly. But no matter. I'm sure there's probably one of you in the comments that knows how to reactivate. It shows my brush. It's, it's whatever, it's fine. And I'll just sort of fulfill that shadow just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to flatten that. Okay, that's to save and go back into Lightroom. And here you can see. Um, let me only set the other one. You can see the before, oops, the before and the after, the before and the after. So. Now, um, Usually there's not too much that I go in and do in uh, Lightroom again. For web processing, uh, I might go through and add a second bout of uh, sharpening just because it looks a little bit more presentable on the internet. Um, Oh, you know what I did do? I did forget to um, even her skin tone just a little bit. Now, this isn't an exact science. Um, there are many, many ways of um, doing this, but I find um, I find that I most it's most useful to me in situations like this. Whenever I just um, lower the opacity of my regular brush some, and um, 
select one of the layers and sample around the skin um, for different skin tones uh, and just brush in to even out the tones a little bit more and this is a really rough way of doing this um, but when the skin tones are already rather uniform it's pretty uh, useful you can sort of see the change there and just going through and selecting different tones every now and then trying to keep with the, re the original um, luminous values of the skin in the first place uh, but I am trying to even the tones out so you see there what, what I did and just resave that again go through and add those bits of sharpening a little bit more noise reduction And sometimes I'll see if I like um, one of the VSEO presets as a final adjustment. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, it's really just a subjective thing. Sometimes they work on photos and other times they don't. I usually try to stay away from them um, just because I feel like they compromise my creative integrity, if that makes sense. Um, but to each their own. I understand why some people use them. Um, I've used them in the past. However, it isn't something that I, um, I don't know, I, I have a little bit of uh, a battle inside my own mind using them. Uh, they are quick and easy, but at the same time, they're just a bit not for me. Uh, and if there's anything else that I like about or that I could change I would like more but yeah I think that's pretty much it and so again we have um, our before and after comparison so here's the before here's the after you can go in and look closely at the details increase the load and work the load and you can see where that um, local contrast is taking place around the edges. And again, this wouldn't be um, a final edit. It's just something that I would do for uh, web usage. There you have it. That's uh, the editing process of one of my photos. Um, I hope maybe that you learned something from watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to uh, help in any way that I can. Uh, if you have any corrections, let me know. I'm always up for learning. Um, but again, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.